All right, and we're back for another episode of the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. It's Gerald Glassford coming right back at you here from Lakers Fast Break, Pop Culture Cosmos, Inside Sports Fantasy Football, and Game Source. We truly appreciate everyone out there listening to all of our shows. And if you can, please give us a five-star review on Apple and Spotify Podcasts. Plus, if you can like, share, subscribe, follow, or do anything that you can to support us right here at the Lakers Fast Break, Pop Culture Cosmos, Inside Sports Fantasy Football, Game Source, the great folks at Lakerholics.com, the ongoing chat that always happens during game time at Lakersball.com, plus our good friends at the Hoop Heads Podcast Network that help support this show with some great social media posts that are out there that always goes ahead and tells everybody the great things that we do here at the Lakers Fast Break. And if you can support all these great causes, it is sincerely appreciated. Well, if Spike Lee, who was at the game today with the Lakers facing off against the Knicks, could make this game against the Lakers versus the Knicks in primetime Saturday a movie, I think he would probably give this movie a title like somebody had to had to win. Somebody just had to win. Because seemingly we've got, you know, with the with two teams that go in there with both sub 500 records, 24 and 28 for the Knicks and 25 and 28 for the Los Angeles Lakers. It just seems like we saw a tale of two halves. The first half, the Knicks couldn't do anything wrong and the Lakers couldn't do anything right. And in the second half, it was the exact opposite. The Lakers seemingly couldn't do anything wrong until the final minute and the Knicks couldn't do anything right. And if you're a Lakers fan or a Knicks fan out there that's listening in, this is your entire season in a microcosm as far as it's concerned. With the highs and lows and all the things in between but the Lakers, buoyed by a third-quarter comeback by Malik Monk, who just infused the Lakers with life with 21 points in the third quarter. Truly a tremendous performance. And with strong performances from a returning LeBron James and also Anthony Davis coming and still playing like he's been playing so well since he's come back from injury. I'll tell you what, it was just a great thing to see indeed. But the Lakers... Unfortunately, could not execute in the final minute of the game and did a terrible job of doing that. So went to overtime, made us nervous. But a key decision by Frank Vogel with him benching Russell Westbrook was, I think, a key to the Lakers winning in overtime after Russell Westbrook in a primetime performance had even the Crypto.com Arena booing him with a horrible performance. So... Frank finally had the guts to go ahead and sit him down once again. And the Lakers pulled out to a overtime victory, 122 to 115. Was Russell Westbrook not executing at all, especially down the stretch? The reason why the Lakers Lakers were, you know, let it go to an overtime game. You could go ahead and debate that, but he's still one for 10. Horrible game from him. But let's put the positives in perspective here. Malik Monk, 29 points, LeBron James, 29 points, and Anthony Davis, 28 points. Solid game from Trevor Trevor Reza coming off the bench, playing some key minutes. And I'll tell you what, the Lakers did finally get the job done. But if you're a Lakers and Knicks fans, this is your season of microcosm because the up and down rides that we've been seeing all season long came into play for both teams. And here today to talk about the game, first off, is the mastermind behind Lakerholics.com. I'll tell you what right now, if you're not checking out his latest article that goes into detail about Anthony Davis, about if he could be that Kickstarter to the rest of the season, him playing like he did today and ever since he came back from injury is a great boost for the team. We'll see now that LeBron has come back from his knee injury. We'll see if that can go ahead and really get the team underway. And Malik Monk staying in the starting lineup, I also think was a great move that's finally way overdue to have all these three components together. But here today to talk about the game is a good man indeed. It is Laker Tom. Laker Tom, I will not discuss your crazy Laker trade that you had that I saw earlier at your at Laker Tom on Twitter right now. We will focus on the game. But as we, you know, basically if you're a Lakers and Knicks fan, this is your season. 
in a nutshell. Well, both of these teams have been so disappointing so far that uh, the expectation is that you they have to win every game to be successful because they're just not playing up to the part that they should be. Um, I have to give Frank Vogel credit. I did not believe, I could not believe it when he finally benched Avery uh, and, and started Malik. Um, and it was great news to find out that LeBron was going to play. And also that nothing new had come up with Anthony that, you know, that he wouldn't be able to play. Um, I thought that the first half was the worst half the Lakers played all year. And the second half, other than that little pause, pause at the end of the game, was maybe the set best second half they played. Their defense was terrific in the third quarter. Um, and Malik Monk, Malik, you know, I, I've been screaming and yelling for the Lakers to trade Russell Westbrook so that they'll be able to afford somehow to keep Malik Monk. Because the three, the big three on the Lakers is LeBron, AD, and Monk. It's not LeBron, AD, and Russ. And Russ showed it tonight. And I give Frank Dogel credit because the call I made right at the end of the game when we're going into overtime was that Russell Westbrook needs to be put on the bench so that you have some control over the guy's ability to negatively impact the game at key moments. And um, I thought that was a great move by Frank. It tells Russell right off the bat that if you don't play well in the game, you're not going to be there at the end. And the Lakers need that because Monk is the guy who is going to be the third star on this team as long as we can keep him. Um, so this was a great game for a come behind. Um, LeBron was just sensational. I mean, some of the plays that he made at the end of the game are unbelievable for a 21 year old LeBron James, much less a 37 year old. And Anthony Davis, anybody who thinks that this guy is soft, didn't watch this game tonight because he was just swallowing rebounds and, uh, played great defense. Um, he is and can be as good a center as anybody else in the league. He showed that against Embiid last time they played, and he's showing it every single game. Let me ask you. Let me ask you this though. Remember earlier this season, before he got hurt, we were talking about how bad he was looking. Like every seemingly young big man was blocking his shot. He got no lift at all. I mean, was it just clearly that work on the knee? And clearly, there was there was, seems like there was something wrong. There had to. We well, were think, always speculating. I think I think the problem is is that you know he said something interesting that I saw on Twitter. He said basically he got spoiled because he played so long in in New Orleans without winning. And then winning that first year at the Lakers was such, you know, such a turnaround for him. And then, you know, not having the quick turnaround and and then suffering the injuries and so forth. I think he got in. I think he got overconfident, and I think I, I think this period of time off not only allowed him to get fully healthy, but fully healthy mentally, where he, you know he really all of a sudden saw how he has to play. You know, he he's all year long he's done well in attacking the basket, and he leads the league in you know points right under points in the paint, and and and, and but his shot has been off. You know, and now since he's come back, um, his shot has looked a lot better. He's not taking threes, which I think is fine. The last thing we really need is LeBron, AD, and Russ to take the threes. Um, we've got other guys who can do a better job of that. So, um, listen, we've all said, everybody on this show has said that as long as we have a healthy, engaged, and rested LeBron James and Anthony Davis going into the playoffs, we'll be fine, um, regardless of where we are. And uh, it, right now, it looks very good and promising for that. So I'm just hoping that, you know, we can continue along. Um, silver lining could be that there is maybe some impetus right now for us to make a move with respect to Russ um, or for Russ to make a move where he'll suddenly start playing and being more contributing and to winning an environment rather than to a losing env environment. Um, I think that there's, you know, there's, there's, this was a big game for, for Frank Vogel. He made two key moves, changing the starting lineup. And then Ben Dundee said it actually really appropriately that when you take a star like Russell Westbrook and you bench him for the overtime, you better win that game. And the guy that you put in to replace him, Taylor Horton Tucker, who was the plus leader for the team in the entire game, really made a couple of key plays. So um, 
that's encouraging. You know, um, we got one win. We're still only three games away from getting in the number six position. And we've got, uh, uh, let's see, this is our 54th game. So we've got 18 games to go. Is that right? 28 That's games? 28, 28 games, games, yep. It's, tell you what, I'm very encouraged by it, my friend. Yeah. Uh, and and we'll get deep into the Russell Westbrook discussion, uh, you know, here in a minute. I just wanted to give a big shout out to the Philippines. We've got a lot of people watching now. Some of them are from the Philippines. I say salamat to you, everybody out there who is watching from that area. Thank you so much for joining us. It is a Lakers fast break. And the Lakers did win in overtime, 122 to 115. Again, with a strong overtime performance and a big three that we finally got from Malik Monk. Not the one we actually thought was before the start of the season, but yes, we got a big three indeed. Malik Monk, Anthony Davis, and LeBron James all chipping in with 28 and 29, respectively. Just a great performance. And here today, also talked about the game is a good man indeed. It is the man behind Ox1947 at LakersBall.com. It is Joe Soro. Joe, great to have you here. I know I just got my good friend from Orlando, you know, in the Florida area, TJ Johnson here as well. He's going to be come ch chiming in on the game as well. He was He's staying up late to watch the game. That's what a L.A. New York primetime game, that's what it does. It seems to inspire people from all around the world with two of the most storied NBA franchises, Joe. You're turning into Larry King. You got all these people coming from everywhere. Remember back in the 90s when he would, all right, now today. From well, TJ was a major part of the beginning of the Lakers fast From break Birmingham, break. Alabama, we have TJ out there. You know, like this, just, that's what I got right now. That's okay. Everybody seems to want to come in. It's when we're losing, Joe. And from Nobody the Philippines. wants to show up. Hey, for, the, for the Pinoids out there, hey, Philippines, maybe the biggest, one of the biggest countries in terms of Laker fandom and Kobe Absolutely. Dome. Um, Just so grateful that they're watching. Thank you so much again, Salamat, for all your support. But, Joe, I, I mean, going in, you have to be encouraged, especially after that dreadful first half where everybody thought that the Lakers just showing nothing on the defensive <clears throat> end. We saw Russell Westbrook stinking it up, and you can actually visibly not only see people booing, but audibly hear people booing in the Crypto.com arena. And it just – it was very – Sad to see where the state of Russell Westbrook's play has gone. He could have redeemed himself by just making a free throw in late in the game. Couldn't do it. And I agree with, with Frank Vogel. Even though there were some decisions he made on lineups during the course of the game that I thought were suspect. <laughs> yeah, as I know, Laker Tom shaking his head. But you know what? He got it. He made the call to bench him in that overtime. And I think that's what the difference was in this game. It's it's not it, it's no longer Russ is having a bad game. It's Russ is a bad game. He needs to either the the Lakers have to do this. There is no long we can't do this anymore. If they don't trade, the draft Russ, pick is worth it. Get rid of it. Yeah, you, you, if you do not trade Russell Westbrook by next week, you need to sit him down and and do what the Rockets did with John Wall and say Russ. It's time for you to go and take a vacation a little early. The team dynamic, it's not his missed shots. I've been saying this since before, right when we got him. I said, forget about the missed shots. That's fine. It's decision-making. It's, it's his decision-making, and his defense is atrocious. And the last game that we lost, his not being able to close that turnaround from Reggie Jackson was a was the reason why we lost that game. Yeah. It's not it's not a shooting. It's Russell Westbrook. It's not working. And again, I'm not going to I'm going to always say this at the end. I supported the trade. I was dead wrong and I'm going to continue to say I'm dead wrong. I wonder I was. who was dead right on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Don't don't and, hurt your arm, pat yourself. Yeah. Back. Yeah, oh. it, 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 it it's it was it's it by far probably See one my eyebrows the, going up. One down. of the worst ones. One of the worst ones. I thought a third option would definitely work. It's a, he, I don't even know if he's a good sixth option at this point in his career. But they're going to have to make that decision. And as far as Frank Vogel, um, I, I, I see I've been, if, it, if it doesn't go if it goes this way and it keeps on continuing, I see the the call that Frank has to make to have him coming off the bench. Well, here's the yes. thing with Frank. Here's the thing with Frank. There's there's this battle between the mind and the heart with Frank. 
your your heart is saying, eh, what's with these lineups and what's with this and that, but your head's like, what's the choice? Like he's being pulled from four or five different directions. So tonight he he kind of sort of figured it out, um, which is the part in your head where they're like, I, I know he's capable of this. How come he's not doing it? But you're trying to cater to a guy who's making $44 million while watching a guy who's making $1.7 million just outclass everybody on the team other than your two stars. So it, it is it is it is it, it's torture. And then you're adding the fact that they're not ever playing 48 minutes. They're playing really 30 minutes a game, every game. The other minutes, I don't know what they're doing. I've been under the weather the last couple of days. Tonight was the longest game in the history of my life. I'm dozing in and out, watching them try to act like they knew how to play basketball. And then my brain was like clicking in once they started making some shots and I'd wake up and kind of, okay, what's going on? Then they go down to 12 again. I go, they'd be down 12 again. I'm like, all right, I'm going to go to sleep. Then I come back out. All of a sudden it's six, it's five, it's three. Then they take the lead. And then finally I wake up and then they start kind of evening out. They're starting to play well. And I'm watching AD and it's like, God, thank you. Thank you for coming back. That's kind of, if you, if you watch the game time thread, you can see me writing that. Uh, basically writing how happy I am that AD is back, how great Monk is, and how much I want to go choke every ref at that game. All the ref, boy. I was like, Jesus, <laughs> like, really? And by the way, if anybody, if anyone, uh, I hate to say this, but if anyone needs the suits to come back, it's Tom Thibodeau. Yeah, I mean, I, I, okay, oh I will say this. God. I know that, I know that's talk. I, I understand. Someone needs, someone needs to tell no, no, I gotta say no, this. No, I'm gonna say this. I, let me say this. Let me say this. Because <laughs> I gotta say. Go let ahead, me say go this. Ahead. Let me say this because go ahead. I was thinking the same exact thing when I saw Tom Thibodeau on the sidelines. But the thing is, I actually, for the most part, like most of the coaches out there wearing the NBA things that you can buy as a fan out there. I've seen things that I've actually purchased that Frank Vogel has worn since the, you know, they did that since the, since the bubble. I actually like that. But then again, if we go back to all the suits, we're going to see how many of the guys out there, how many coaches out there are going to actually show off all their pit stains because they don't use enough roll on on their thing. I don't want to go back to that. But then when I see Tom Thibodeau, I may have to say you're right. It should just be optional. Let, let yeah, the it coaches, should be optional. I yeah, let the coach. It, it, it's highly a, it, recommended. Yes, it's it's, it's a bad look again, Gerald. And again, I'm, I know I'm kind of veering off a little bit, but again, it's an overall just aesthetic. Yeah. I, I'm telling you, I shouldn't have watched the last dance the other day. I'm, I'm yeah, screwed but then, up. But it, okay, Tom Thibodeau I, puts back on I'm the side. Start seeing his pit stains again, for, and then you're just forget like, about okay. the coaches. Forget about the coaches. Michael Jordan, Scotty Pippen, Ron Harper were sitting in the trainer's room after a game drinking beer in suits after a game. So I'm watching the show and I'm remembering the nineties and how all the ratings were like 80 points, you know, every game. And I'm like, wow, when is there any way we can get this back? And then you watch tonight's game and you're like sitting there going, I know I love how AD played. And I love, by the way, can someone explain to me what the hell they did to LeBron's knee? Where he started jumping to the point where his chin was in the rim again. <laughs> what, 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 you know, have, to, having those five games off. Yeah, exactly. Did he, did he, did he go to Kobe's doctor in Germany? Like, what the hell happened? Well, because... that seems to be the case because you got AD who had a considerable amount of time off. He's playing well. Then you have yeah. a, you know, LeBron five. Maybe that's what they the should entire do. Two weeks before the playoffs. Uh, rest yeah. Rest okay. It. Yeah. Okay. Rest well, him, let him come know. back for. Two weeks right before. Well, the playoffs. let's let's, let's get up in the standings first before we go resting for well, two weeks. Now. Thinking, oh, oh, I think that what Laker Tom. I think what Laker Tom is. <laughs> it's uh, only in a couple is, extra games, TJ. It's not that bad. <laughs> well, Laker, I think, you know, if you know where the, if you know where you're going to be at the, at the standings, and if that's the case, and they're ten days out, let them rest the ten days. Yeah, we got enough. Oh, yeah, we got yeah. enough. There's no more rest to get through there. There's no more rest. The rest is gone. That's over. <laughs> There's only one guy that needs rest, and he needs to go. Like well, I think R that was the thing. They brought There's that up. There's only one RIP rest, as in rest in peace. Is there, <laughs> you're, talking about, you're talking about the final rest. Yeah, they what? need to change the, the RW to RIP. 
for Russ. Well, the thing is, I think the key stat. Yeah. I think the key stat for the Lakers is this. He might save to- the Knicks. He could save the Knicks because the Knicks yeah, were right. dismal in the second half. And, and, and yeah, you know, the, I mean, the, that was the trade-off. Do you want to pull Russ, or do you want to maybe let him do really good, and the Knicks might bite? You know. Also, guys, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but you can't. I, th- th- there's some comparisons with with the Knicks and the and the Lakers, and I don't think I don't think it's fair. The Knicks have no top five, ten no. player on their team, so. I, I'm sorry, I'm not going to buy it. Last year, the, the and now Knicks they have a, back a, into their normal mode. I know, I know, RJ Barrett has finally kind of come into his yeah, own. The Knicks it. have a much deeper roster than the Lakers. That's exactly it, Gerald. The Knicks have a roster. The Lakers have a top. They got a lot of guys that they could move team. to match Lakers forty-four million. Top heavy. Yeah, that's true, Laker Tom. I mean, I saw your trade the earlier today, one where it had Ben Simmons going one way and you had James Harden going the other way, and somehow a man somebody. Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons is going to be a net next week. No, nah, the Nets. Well, he's not a. He's a terrible fit on the Nets. They're going to bring a third team in. You guys are missing the key statistic <laughs> that was mentioned during the course of the game when we're talking about the Lakers and the Knicks both being under five hundred, both having subpar seasons. Is that there's only six players in the league to play every single game, and unfortunately, Russell Westbrook is one of them. But I wanted to go ahead. <laughs> it's supposed to be a joke, everyone out there. Or is it not? I don't know. That could be the key. That know. could be the key. Know. But also know. here today is a good man indeed. He is a major part of the pop culture cosmos. It is TJ Johnson. And TJ, again, as a member, a guy who was here for much of the early days for the Lakers fast break, this is quite different than what we were experiencing then. It is no <laughs> less controversial. It is lo- no <laughs> less newsworthy. And it is no less talked about here on a daily basis. So I want to hear your thoughts. Tonight's game, again, a tale of two cities, a tale of tale two seasons. Two cities, two halves, two I mean, teams. This is the Lakers teams, and Knicks maybe. to a team. Yeah, this is the Lakers and Knicks to the team. One, one I mean, part it, up, it's, one it's part incredible. Down. And and as excited as I am about this Lakers win, I have to be honest with you. And Lakers time out that you, I think you've been you've been talking about it perfectly. But as excited as, as I am about this Lakers win, I feel like this is more of a Knicks collapse. You know, to be fair, uh, as we mentioned, the Knicks don't have a top tier team. They don't have a top tier player. Uh, the Lakers are top heavy, but the fact that they had the Lakers down twenty one, or the fact that the Lakers were down themselves twenty one. Yeah, the, but they the shot nine the twenty is, from three, and we knew that yeah, wasn't going to happen again. The, the, the well, let me ask you this: I mean, think, I think Laker Thomas previously mentioned is that they, the Lakers and the Knicks today, played to the level that they are at. They they mm-hmm. both played like a sub five hundred team with their performances yeah, in, yeah. in each half. They today. did, they did, and as exciting as it is that we got this win, it's 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 not disheartening. We we, we needed the win, so we'll we'll take it however we can get it. If we scrap, claw, fight, we'll, we'll we'll take the win however we can get it. But it doesn't change the fact that right now we're still sitting at twenty six and twenty eight after today's win. We're still a sub five hundred team. And I'm still not convinced, especially if we don't find a way to move West, Russell Westbrook. Westbrook yeah. is yeah. by far the liability right now. Just like Rondo was for you last year and the year before, that is Westbrook as far as I'm concerned. It's time. We've tried the experiment. Um, as excited as I was to see him come, because I was excited too. I mean, it's, it's a third option, right? As excited as I was yeah. to see him come. It's just not working out. And you I don't. Hate I just don't think. Like Westbrook. I, I just don't think you're going to get enough for the forty-four million dollars. At this point, it doesn't matter. At this point, it's I understand. It's, it's addition but, by what, right, what Tom said. What that? What Tom said. That's addition exactly by what it is. I'd say put him on the bench and go ahead, choke at it for the rest of the year, and just use it for a big trade because the, the, you know this summer. You're going to make a much. I mean, look at the Clippers. Look at what the Clippers were able to yeah. utilize yesterday, and they pulled off. I'm sorry to say this. I'm not a Clippers fan. Nobody here is, but they pulled <laughs> off a hell of a trade yesterday, getting Robert Covington and Norman Powell for yeah, basically did. the junk that for agreeing to go to a hundred million dollars in luxury taxes is what they did. <laughs> This yeah, but true. still, you've got an owner this that's going to go ahead and says, pull it Yeah, I know. I mean, we're not he, one of the he, top three teams now. That's and for they're sure. not doing this for this season unless both yeah. of the ring guys come back. Yeah. They're doing this for next season because both of those guys are going to be under contract. They're going to have a much deeper team, and they're going to have both their main guys back. So next Kawhi season, will never be back norm- to normal. He's uh, done. But no, they he may, maybe he doesn't have to be. Maybe you can only have him need him for stretches when you have a back, when you have a team with roster that they're building like that. that those are yeah, two. They, they've done a better job rebuilding the roster around their two stars than we have. 
Absolutely. And it's not even close. Yeah. Not that's even not even close. close. I'm about to say that's that's the understatement of the day. <laughs> um, they've had so many, so many guys who've just really come through, you know. I mean, Reggie, and uh, I mean, you just go down the list and they keep they keep pulling guys out. I mean, I couldn't believe when they made the trade to Detroit, and and I, it's just like every guy on that roster comes through Luke and Kennard plays really well. Has even shot and, well this and year. And on our side, we've got a we've got five guys that we'd like to get rid of. Yeah, <laughs> You're not going to get. Good. It's going to be hard to get rid of five guys, you know. DeAndre um, Jordan signing today. Uh, yeah, look at that. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, and you look at the you look at the plus minus for the game, and the three guys who have the absolutely worst plus minus were Russell Westbrook. Uh, Avery Bradley and DeAndre Jordan. Everybody else was plus. What a surprise. Yeah, yeah, yeah what surprise, a surprise. surprise. It took 54 games for Frank Bogle to understand, at least on this team with what he's got right now, who should start. Um, yeah. Not yet. Not yeah. yet. He has you to know, one the, more. He has to make the one other, more the other thing about The other thing about the Westbrook trade that's really important to me is we're really, when, when they made the decision not to re-sign Caruso, they really strapped themselves by by not having enough tradable assets, and and then to have the worst thing in the world happen, which was THT dropping off of the planet, you know, after after we turned down the trade for Lowry, all of a sudden, and he gave him thirty million dollars, and he didn't show that he deserved it. Um, so that really hurts us, you know. Um, but the key thing is, is if if we could if we can get somebody, even if it's the Knicks, to give us three of those crappy contracts. I don't care which three they are, because it's a lot easier to move an 18, a 10, and a $9 million contract than it is a $47 million contract. And there is an element, too, and, and, and no disrespect to Russ for the greatness of a player he is. I or, mean, I still several times tonight said it. Stop great saying it like in the present tense. Stop saying like present past tense. He was a great player. Right. Well, he still makes great plays, but the simple truth of the matter is, is that he still gets great paycheck. He creates such a chaos that we cannot be consistent, yeah. and this team needs to be consistent. We need this. This game was a complete microcosm of the entire fifty-three previous games. Yeah, no, I, we I we showed our together. worst and we showed our best. Yes, we did. Well, if we show our worst and best for every game the rest of the season, we're not going to be in the playoffs. Not against a Phoenix, not against yeah. Gold State. Yeah. And, and this is the NBA, man. It doesn't matter who it is. Any team out there has got a good, enough good players that they can get hot and a half and take a 20 point lead on you. Absolutely. You know, well, they I mean, come in and do their job. Players in the world, you know. And so we're lucky to be where we are and we're lucky to have our two superstars healthy. At this point, we can't ask for anything more. You know, if Kendrick Nunn can ever get on the court, that would be great. Um, <laughs> but, but it's really up to Rob. Rob's got to make a choice now. He can get rid of Westbrook for sure. If he has to use the first round draft pick, fine, use it. But do it. We need it, to, you know, we it, need to it, move it, forward. Did we kill yeah. ourselves though? Did we kill ourselves today with the trade with New York? Is, is the question um, now? No, it's you not, know, here's, I don't here's think you should take one game. If you look back at the Clippers that. trade, look back at the Clippers and Portland trade. What was so important about that? is an $18 million expiring contract and a $9 million expiring contract. $27 million in expiring contracts. Right. Russell Westbrook, this summer, if we don't trade him now, we still have a shot this summer. Because yeah, we can trade him, saying. and he will be a $47 million expiring contract for a team that wants to get rid of contracts, wants to create cap space for free agency next season. Um, and the, and the number of people coming to you know, next season is lousy free agency, but the season afterwards has got everybody, including LeBron and AD. Well, that's um, what I'm saying. I mean, I, I, so I he could be, you. he's more likely to be moved in summer, but I think we, you know, I'll bet if we take a vote right now with the four people here, if it's possible, move him now, even if it costs a draft. Pick. I would say three or four. Cause now you got, I, I didn't want him on the team in the first place. But yeah, I know the, the three of us, the other three of us did. So you the know, exact same re- now you're all bailing on him. The exact same reason you just described is the reason why I would hold on to him because I don't think you're going to get commensurate value if you trade him in the next five days. I Addition think by you, subtraction. Again, Addition yeah, by you're my argument. That's what I was saying. Addition well, by subtraction. Again, I'm going to say the forty-seven million dollars you could put on, like you said, some good contracts that for some players next season that could build this team into a right don't, direction. Don't forget, don't forget who's running the Knicks right now. I know Dolan is still the owner. Rob Palenka? 
no, no, not, not, not Rob. Um, somebody, somebody much. Uh, Fellow agent, though, another some, agent. World somebody, Wide West. Well, somebody, somebody much, someone closer to LeBron, which is World Wide West. Um, so there could be some, some things there that'll help kind of expedite that if possible. And at that point, if if that happens again, it's going to be an a, an addition by subtraction. It's just. It's killing Westbrook. It's killing the team. Yeah, and um, we can't be the disciplined LeBron, team that we need Le- to be within. This this is the first time in LeBron's career his game did not mesh with somebody else that was great. That was a lot of the reasons why I thought this was going to work because if, if LeBron and his team mentality, his pass first mentality, and allowing the other guys to kind of you know, he's not Kobe. He's not, you know, Jordan. He's not dominant, right? He's not a dominant ball guy and all that. He's, he likes to spread it around. Right, if, right. if that, if that, if that's not working, actually it's worse than I've ever seen it. Mm-hmm. Um, then, then you have to unload this. Uh, you have to Rob, go get whatever favors you've done with other GMs or NBA guys. Now it's time to tell them now it's like, all right, guys, I need help. Throw me a bone. In two, three years, I'll be a third team or a fourth team and whatever you want. I don't care what it is. But they got to get this guy out, and they got to get him out ASAP. If there's any shot at winning something this year, which is probably already too late, but it's definitely a zero if they don't get him out. Well, okay, I'm just going to say this. I think the reason why you guys loved the trade, uh, you know, in the beginning was the fact that you still saw Russell Westbrook as something that he was not already, and that was a great player. He was a great player. That's something that, you know, I heard Mark Jackson, you can't control greatness, 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 greatness. Greatness left Russell Westbrook seasons ago. If Again, I always point back to the bubble when the Lakers – single-handedly showcased why Russell Westbrook is no longer at that level anymore. He was once, he's no longer, like Carmelo Anthony. Carmelo Anthony now has come to grips with the player he is. Russell Westbrook has not come to grips with the player he once was and now is. I, think I that's also, where, or needs to be. I also, I, be. on this team, yeah. that's the problem. I also think that the term great has been completely rung up, yeah. washed, just it's way over you. It's it's gone. It's it's not. A, it does zero meaning. And we stretch it for third superstars along the way. Yeah. We we we. I've I've been watching in sports in general. I've been watching and I, I've been watching coaches and players make the Hall of Fame now. Where I'm like, how the hell did they make the Hall of exactly. Fame? Exactly. Exactly. Like, how did Grant Hill make the Hall of Fame? He was how did injured. Tracy McGrady make the Hall how did of Tracy Fame? McGrady make the Hall of Fame? I know he was great for five years. Like, that was great. But the guy never even won one playoff. Uh, I'm sorry. When he was with, when he was sitting on the bench with San Antonio, he won. Hey, but, hey, that was the only playoff series he won. So, and again, I know Tracy McGrady was arguably the second best shooting guard during the Kobe era. But I'm sorry. I, I, I If you have to ask the question, you're not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Russell Westbrook, great. Great at what? Stats? Yeah. Great at winning, which is what sports is about. Zero. No great. He's average, if 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 at best. So I don't I didn't look at it that way. I looked at it from a simple fact that you have a ball handling talent. LeBron can do anything. LeBron is, you know, I'm sorry, but LeBron needs to be kind of Let's let's try to stretch out as much as we can here. And you have a third guy here who can handle the ball, who could get to the rim, and 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 at least have some kind of a a cover for for that. But I I just did not know this guy missed layups every game. Every it's game, it's incredible. two or three at a time. That's six points every game, and it's it's also a momentum destroyer. And his defense is even worse. I used Usually to always, a five point play or a four point play going okay, the other way. Okay, so so when he misses those layups, it's mm-hmm. two points, right? Right. Right. In, in reality, right. Mm-hmm. However, just like when Shaq used to dunk on people, it, it was only two points. But you man, when you, you look at down. Dale, when you would Some look at those, more important than other points. Good. 
Good point, we, 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 I used to always tell everybody, I'm like, man, imagine you're Dale Davis, okay? Dale Davis could walk anywhere on this planet, and people would be like, holy crap, what the hell is this? He made Dale Davis look like this, okay? And he'd get frustrated, and then the whole – like, it was more than two points. So it's, mm. so Russell Westbrook is the opposite of that. When he misses those layups, you know Frank – uh LeBron, AD, all those guys are just like, oh. Yeah. And of course, yeah, it's, the fans, it's deflating. Uh, it's deflating. And it's now, deflating. You, and every almost 90% of the time, the other team comes back and they shoot a three or, yep. or get their own layup. It is, it's devastating. This is an emotional game. It's a momentum game more than ever before. It was always a momentum game, but more than ever before because. We've we've got this Steph Curry now culture of three 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 three. We can come back in twenty like this. Everybody going crazy about coming back from twenty one. That doesn't mean anything anymore. You guys got to really get together with today's game. Twenty one point leads are what eight point leads were twenty years ago. You have to start understanding that. So if if you're going to be a coach and you're going to say, look, it's twenty twenty two, guys. When you get a twenty one point lead, you can't stop. They're going to yeah. come back in like yeah. five minutes. Well, that's why the Lakers yeah. have given up more double-digit leads than anyone in the NBA this season. Yeah. yeah it's that's, just something. Seven, that's just seven threes. It's just, it's just seven threes. You mm-hmm. look at it like – It sounds, it sounds funny, games, right, TJ? Right? It sounds like funny, NBA but – NBA Jam. <laughs> dude, you got, you got secondary players making seven threes in a game all the time. Yeah, right? it's yeah. not, it's not I, a, I, I oh, we had a career – who had a career night? Somebody had a career night of 36 points tonight. Well, R.J. Barrett did. Oh, R.J. Yeah. Barrett, and, and right. Most I mean, of that was like scoring every game. on Russell every game Somebody sets a career you know what? record I'm, against I'm, the Lakers. I'm glad he, he had a good game because that guy got crapped on Yeah, with the whole Zion thing. And oh, where's yeah. <laughs> and I like Zion. I'm not trying to dog him. But, he, I mean, come on, guys. He, he, well, the thing know. is, though, what even made it worse was that they just traded for Cam Reddish, and you thought Cam Reddish was going to eat into his <laughs> minutes. Then all of a sudden, and all of a sudden, you see Cam Reddish. He's not even getting into the game. So that was a great. That's a World Wide West. Let's go ahead and use up a first round draft pick on a guy we don't even play. But that's a Nick story. That's for a Nick. Kind of like a Palenka Vogel story, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. It sounds like it indeed. But before Let's we get these out, shooters, get all these shooters and send them to Frank. See what he does with them. Well, don't get me started. Don't get me started. But before we head on out, TJ, I want to make sure that you get in some good time in, my friend, on tonight's game, Malik Monk. Oh. We yes. got to go ahead and talk about Malik Monk because I know yes, you and we I, were DM, we were DM, DMing back and forth in regards to Malik. Huge I, I know Malik quarter. is not the most Huge. consistent players, a consistent scores, but this is what he does when he's given minutes. This is what he is yep. capable of. That's what Tom and I going in the season, what we saw in Malik is that he can get you that bundle of points quickly. Yes, there mm-hmm. are going to be some two for five nights where he only scores like five or seven points in the mm-hmm. starting lineup. That's what people have to be prepared with. But there are nights like tonight where he just has that quarter where he just absolutely blows up. Yeah, 18 points in the in the third quarter, score more points than the entire Nick team combined. Uh, yes. It was incredible. To, 13, it was incredible right. to watch. Yeah, 18 to 13, 18 and the Knicks at 13. It was incredible to watch. And I've, I, I agree with you. I kind of equate him to, you know, uh, another microwave who played with LeBron James for a time. It was J.R. Smith. And this is before J.R. really got with LeBron. But J.R. Smith would go cold, 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 and all of a sudden he couldn't miss. He couldn't miss. He couldn't miss. It's the exact same scenario with Malik Monk. Um, what's what's awesome to see, though, and it's, it's like LeBron said in this postgame interview. I don't know if you got a chance to watch it. But it's like as soon as he sees one go in, and, and that's all a shooter needs, any shooter, anybody that's played the game of basketball, knows you need one you need to see the ball go into the net one time that's why it was important and he's more than just a three-point score that's the yeah, great yeah, thing absolutely. about this he's game. a two-way player he's a two-way player that's exactly what you need in today's game but that's and he why he came up so, as a, a point guard they tried mm-hmm. charlotte really tried to turn him into a point guard mm-hmm. he really doesn't fit there but he does have no. some good good playmaking and passing instincts for, for yeah. a guy who plays the well, that's just guard. like that's just like us trying to put westbrook into a, <laughs> a point guard westbrook was is not was never a point guard the nba tried to make him a point guard when he was with oklahoma and he just maintained his point guard status but he was never a point guard he was never will never be a point guard whole other story anyways so with malik monk right well malik monk 
it's so important for them to see that ball going to them. That's why it was devastating to see those missed free throws of Westbrook towards the in the second half. It was devastating because once you once you lose that confidence and once you see it in his body lane, it's evident. It was evident as the day is bright that he missed those layups, he missed those free throws, and you can just his body language told the entire story. And the exact opposite with Malik Monk. Malik Monk hit that one shot. And you can see he felt it. Turn around, hit another shot. You see he felt it. It was, as as we've talked about already in the show, it's a game of runs. It's a game of momentum. And Malik Monk single-handedly pulled the Lakers back into this game today. It was uh, it was incredible to watch. I, I, it was exciting to watch. Um, I wish we had more exciting moments like this where they went our way instead of it going back and forth and we turn around and lose that at the end of the day. I don't like that last-minute three-point shot. Uh, by LeBron to end the game. I thought you had a couple more seconds. You just have to go to the hole. You just have to go to the hole. We were in foul. They were in foul trouble too. It was yeah. But like we, Tom, we, how many times have we seen this already? Where they it, we see shots, this NBA. Man. It's an NBA thing where they always go ahead for the three pointer when clearly all you have to do is just drive to the basket. Well, that was a tie game. I don't mind it if you're it on the road and you're behind by two. I still think it's That's shoot exactly. Three. Exactly. Yeah, but, I'm just that. but if it's a tie game, like you wait this. down to the last minute and you take the last shot with no time left. Try to yes. dunk it. And you go to the basket, man. Yes. I mean, it's I don't think you're roll. playing at the rec center pick and roll. or if you're exactly. playing in the NBA finals. In the last game, the pick and roll. I I, I, I remember right before the, we got out of the timeout, I said pick and roll to AD and then boom, it was an alley-oop. Yeah, but it has to be a hard pick and roll. AD does a lot of soft pick and rolls where he just goes and flashes. Well, he and then flashes, tries to cut. yeah. He does yeah. a lot of flashes. He has to and, actually yeah. execute the pick. When he does that, then he gets open. Right, and that needs to be that needs to be more consistent. Well, we never go That's back to those plays. You notice that? We never go back and – I mean, you can go down to any gym and some guys – watch two guys find a play they got that the other team can't stop. And they'll, keep going and they'll run it. that thing until the yep. guys – yeah, it's called the Stockton to Malone. The Lakers just don't do yeah, that. Exactly. It drives me nuts. Exactly. Stockton Malone Stockton did it for 20 Malone years. Why day. can't we do it? Not yeah, really. Day. LeBron yeah. AD pick and roll. I think that sounds pretty good. Move everybody over to the other side. Yeah. Separate them out there and just run it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. make them make somebody else make a play. Make them stop that. Get them I the never understood that playing the game of basketball with one second left. Yeah, I never understood that. They'd be like, stop him from going right. Well, until he can stop my left, I'm not going to go right. He can't stop me from going left, so why I mean, would I switch it up? If you have – okay, if you have that at the end of the game and then you have on the other side Mello, Monk, and any other decent shooter that's out there that they would actually respect, there you go. That's all you need. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's all you need to do. That's all you need You to know, do. the interesting thing about this Russell Westbrook trade would is how it would open up minutes and opportunities – to change the starting lineup dynamics, both defensively and shooting wise, mm. um, you know. And if we got three, if we got three players from it, we would have Tht none and the tri- the pick plus remember, these three other players. We well, it, it, I mean, even guys. the stats bear it out, Laker Tom. Remember that trade I told you about? In fact, actually, you asked me to go ahead and put it on the air the other day, and I did. When you do, when you type it in, the four players for the four players, and you include it was to Orlando, and you include right. Russell Westbrook going to Orlando along with you know some other players going for coming back with Cole Anthony. I think uh, you had uh, Mo Bamba, you had Gary Harris, and then you had. I did an article well, with ten Ross. different trades that. Well, the, no, if, the, but the point you is, them, there, there, what there's the a point million is, opportunities to move Russ. What I'm saying is, what and you guys are talking about Russell Westbrook and what he does to a team. You hit execute on that trade, it immediately says the Lakers gain ten wins off of it. So there you go. That I mean, just yeah, right there. But just I did by ten. Tra- I did ten trades that all came out negative for the Lakers. With Russell Russell Westbrook and uh, Tht, well, and I what mean, happens Russell, when you when you happens when you get a trade like that? All of a sudden, salaries don't matter because you're up, you know, ten percent of. But Russell Westbrook leaving the team in my trade gave the Lakers ten wins. Yeah, so, I know, addition but by subtraction. That's of course, that's all about. based upon on what uh, is this advanced stats? <laughs> no, that's uh, the trade. Just the trade the machines trade have machine. built what's, in the what's, LeBron what's rating the, what's, what's that the comes TS? from uh, basketball. What, what is sounds like sounds like some two K stuff right there? Yeah, uh, advanced stats. Uh, I, I always look at advanced. I always think of Bill Belichick when someone asked him if he did al- analytics. He goes, "No." Yeah, well, that's like you, know, you asked Craig Bordel about <laughs> Avery Bradley's negative plus minus, and he says the, the stats don't show what he does on the court. 
Yeah, yeah, dead stats <laughs> always make me laugh. Oh, by the way, yeah, we have LeBron Hearts. James and AD. Gee, I wonder why we won. Right. <laughs> you know, there is something to the common everyday wisdom that if you have LeBron James on your team, you should surround him with shooters. But the you know, idea elite center, uh, like the Anthony idea. Davis, you should surround him with shooters. But the problem uh, is the oh, problem it's a three is, point era. You you better have a lot of shooters. Th there is yeah. a problem though. Sometimes shooters that come to LA turn into pumpkins. That's true. Now, luckily for us, Malik and Mello yeah. uh, kind of broke that. That and, and I want to just update everybody on Mello. His hamstring, the injury is not as serious as once thought. He's a, on a day to day, so he could be as back as early as Tuesday's game. So I just want to make sure that's clear. But finish up, on that's Joe. Good to know. That's You're good all set, to know. Joe. Uh, any last thoughts before we head on out? Well, um, I'm going to be patiently waiting for what Rob's going to do for next yep. week until yep. next week comes. I I'm not, I'm not really, I, again, I'm, 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 I, I don't try to do positive and negative and all that. It just, I'm just trying to tell you what I feel right now. on everything. But I don't want to see Tom's, you know, if we do another Laker, if we do another Lakers trade deadline special Lakers fast break trade deadline, special. <laughs> I don't want to see Laker Tom's like blood pressure rise as it gets closer to the trade deadline and realize we're not making a trade. Like he did. I'm off medication week. now, Gerald. It's so you okay. don't have to worry it's about okay. that. Hey, hey, God help. If they get, if it's, it's more than I'm saving likely. my Percocets now rather it's than more taking than, them. It's okay. more than likely they're not going to be able to trade Westbrooks. It's just too much money, um, yeah. and they'd have to take back too much crap. So the reality in the end is, are they going to have enough testicular fortitude after the trade deadline to sit him? Yep, yep. He yep. cannot yep. stay on this team. It's not working. He, mm. he, he, he Emotionally, he destroys everything. It me. I'm sorry. It, I, I know it sounds mean, but he can't. It just he can't. He can't be on this team. It's not going to work. Well, I'll finish. If it that's up, the I situation. See. Then they have to trade him, Joe. You can't. Well, you can't. If you really, if huh? the Lakers really felt the same way as as we do, you, you have to trade him. Yeah. I mean, it's you good. have to say, okay, that draft check, that draft pick is worth making a trade, even if the worst I can do is bring John Wall in. At least John Wall will fit the role. Yeah, he I, the ball a little I think a little I think they, I actually think that that deal. But I think there are happen. other deals. I think there are other deals out there. There's Oklahoma City that's going to have 32 million in cap space. Yeah, and they're 25 million dollars under salary minimum. Right, and they'll have to pay that money to their players, so they could easily take a player like Westbrook in there. Let, let them let them retire. Well, they could be giving and give it to the players. My God, they, they could give us Muscala. They could give us Muscala and uh, Williams. Oh, not yeah. Muscala yeah. again. <laughs> not Muscala again. Oh, Magic on. Johnson's goodbye. He was horrible for us the first time. Magic Remember? Johnson's goodbye. That was like one little stretch. It was a, <laughs> his bye -bye. career has been terrific other than that. Magic's goodbye trade. <laughs> on another team. And we gave up Zubats for it. And Zubats has been the starting You end up with cap space. To do one thing that's really important that we all talked about today, keep Malik Monk next year. Yes, yes. Because otherwise, the most we can do is hard. We can't hard cap ourselves as long as we have Russell Westbrook on the roster. There's no way we can do that with AD, LeBron, and Russell. But if you get him off the roster, you can then hard cap yourself so that you can pay Malik $10 million and give him a three year or four year, 40, 30, 40 million dollar deal. Right. Yep. A lot of things to think about. You got to save the superstar who's coming, which is Malik Monk. And to do that, you have to get rid of the superstar you thought you had in well, Russell Westbrook. Well, there's a lot of things to think about indeed, but we'll see what happens in the next five days. If the trade deadline draws near, especially for if you're Russell Westbrook. I mean, we saw it's clear tonight that something has to be done in regards to his future with the Lakers. If he does stay on, I'll say it this way that, you know, at UCLA, he actually did come off the bench. Maybe it's time for him to do that, just that once again. Well, but, but guys, it's been great having you here. Once again, it's Joe Sorrell. Please go ahead and check him out as Ox1947 at LakersBall.com. TJ Johnson staying up with us late night from Florida. Good job, TJ. Go ahead and check him out every time he shows up with us at the Pop Culture Cosmos and also Lakers Fast Break. And, of course, Laker Tom catch his crazy trades. I love the trade today. That is some heavy dream in there, guy. I'll tell you what. I loved it. If you, if you go ahead and you know make it happen, that'd be great. I don't great. know what trade you're talking about, Gerald. I just oh, yeah, there's so many of them. That's right. No, the three-way <laughs> that you coming. did. 
Just keep the one coming. that you had uh, Ben Simmons going to the Lakers via Brooklyn. Uh, oh, I, well, I actually think that there's a possibility for that. Of course you do. Of course well, you do. Well, no, because <laughs> listen, Philly wants Harden, no problem. Okay, they they want Harden, right? Okay, so now let's look at the team that they're trading to. You think that that team really wants Ben Simmons? He would be a great fit, actually. He'd get a lot of pressure. I don't think he'd be a good fit at all. I think he'd be a terrible fit. It would work if Kyrie would play. Yeah, yeah. If Kyrie plays, if Kyrie's not going to change his position. Yeah, but if he's still going to have a a half superstar there and an injured Durant. But let me put it this way: and it's a guy who won't shoot and may have mental problems. Hold on. Do you know Brooklyn can actually pay their way in fines to go ahead and have him play? So in the playoffs, he can actually literally play in all the games, including the They've home already, games. The, league, the, 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 the no, Nets they, have said yeah. no for now. The Nets and the NBA have said that would not going to happen. They're not going to allow an NBA team to violate the rules in order to pay no a fine. Okay, well, we'll yeah. see what happens. That, that will never fly. Uh, Kyrie uh, might change his mind. But, you know, he hasn't changed his mind to the point that James Harden, who came there because of him, well, is now going to leave. Well, theoretically, it would actually be a good, pretty good fit because it would allow Kevin Durant to just play on offense and not have to worry about picking up the other guy's big guy or wing on defense, and you could just leave that to Ben Simmons. So theoretically, and Ben Simmons wouldn't have to worry about scoring because he's got one of the all-time greatest scorers right there next to him. In fact, two of them with Kyrie mm-hmm. Irving. So, but then you only well, have half of the games. But you only have to make sure that you know he doesn't now, cry. Now that's doesn't in theory. Like so, right. But in right, theory. what's the record recently? You know, I mean. Well, in theory, the Lakers looked good coming into the season, but. That but think about think about West. Think about Westbrook there. All of a sudden, it makes a whole lot of sense. I, I agree. That's a good idea. Let's do I it. I think you guys just now got to the point where it's Westbrook anywhere. <laughs> Joe, are you speaking for? Are you speaking for the Nets? I think. <laughs> I, I, I was speaking Nets. for the Nets. I agree. The Nets, that's are, are, the Nets. The Nets just on national TV. I mean, his trade his trade stock went even lower on a national TV scale. Yeah, I mean, there's nobody. Yeah. That the one, the know one about team that the one team that has a relationship with Clutch has has two players who are good friends with Ben Simmons. The and only team that could really be sure of what kind of mental state he's in. This is true. Is the Los Angeles Lakers? This is but true. But let me correct. Yeah. Let me let me ask you this: Didn't Kevin Durant leave Oklahoma City? And one of the reasons why was of Russell Westbrook one other time? No, it was to get away agency, from man. Russell Westbrook. Free agency. Westbrook? Free agency. It was free. So yeah, he, I mean, that's that's here to say. He, he, he I don't could know have if it stayed was for a large amount of money with Oklahoma City, though. Hmm. Yeah, but if you, at, if you look at if you look at if you look at if you look at Simmons versus Westbrook going in there, I think yeah. Westbrook is a better fit. For the way they play, Westbrook has better fit anywhere off the Lakers at this point. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is true. This is true. Well, listen, you know, I never, I, I, I've never put a trade out there claiming that I was an objective trade expert. I put a That's trade out there sure. because I'm, my well, name they, is Laker yeah. Tom. What do you? Yes, expect? Laker <laughs> you know, Tom. Right, right. Laker, <laughs> Laker Tom, indeed. But I'll tell you what, TJ, Laker Tom, Joe Soro, great to have all three of you on there. Please go ahead and check out the Pop Culture Cosmos, LakersBall.com, and of course, everything that happens today for Lakers fans at Lakerholics.com. Thank you so much again to Elton, Edie Boy, and Albert for the thumbs up. We had a lot of people watching today. Once again, the Lakers in overtime due to a great second half by Anthony Davis, also LeBron James, and of course, the hero of the day, Malik Monk. All three guys contributed on the back end of the game, and they did a great job, and they overcame all the deficits and all the uphill battles to go ahead in overtime and a terrible, terrible last minute uh, we won't even talk about to the end of the game, but they did come back in overtime (laughs) and actually Really did good in overtime, 122 to 115. We'll go ahead and keep talking about Russell Westbrook and the continued reaction to his benching in the overtime and all the stuff at Lakerholics.com. Be part of the conversation there. I know it's going strong at Lakersball.com. I also know TJ and I got a great show coming up this week on the Pop Culture Cosmos, so check it all out. But once again, if you have any questions for us, at Lakers Fast Break on Twitter or Lakers Fast Break at Yahoo.com. Well, we'll be back for sure. Tuesday night because Milwaukee heads into the crypt. Will it be two in a row? Three out of four? Should have been four out of four, but, you know, Reggie Jackson hit that layup. 
gosh darn it. But we'll see what happens <laughs> Tuesday night after the game. We'll be talking right here on Facebook and also wherever you get your podcasts. And also shout out to YouTube right here at the Lakers Fast Break Podcast.